The latest generation of LVADs have proven very successful in terms of bridge to transplantation. Now we're starting to get some really solid data relating to their use as destination therapy. In the May issue of JAK, we have a paper coming up, results of the destination therapy post FDA approval study with a continuous flow left ventricular assist device. It's a prospective study using the Intermax registry. And I am talking to the first author, Dr. Ulrich Jorda, and he is Associate Professor of Medicine, Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons, and the Medical Director of the uh, Mechanical Circulatory Support Program at New York Presbyterian Hospital there. First off, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Can we talk a little bit of background first in terms of why this is important to know this information? Yes, this study uh, for the first time looks at the commercial use of the HeartMate 2 device uh, in clinical practice in the United States. This device has been uh, tested in the, initially in the bridge to transplantation setting where patients are younger and healthier than the patients in the current study. In that setting, it was tested in a clinical trial. There was a post-approval study which was quite successful and we're now uh, trying to confirm results obtained with this device in the initial uh, destination therapy trial. The major difference between destination therapy patients and bridge to transplant patients is probably age as well as comorbidities. The destination therapy patients we're testing in this trial, uh, actually in this post-approval study, are older and have more comorbidities than the uh, bridge to transplant patients tested previously. The initial study was done to approve this device for destination therapy in advanced congestive heart failure, and we looked at the first 247 patients that were implanted with the HeartMate 2 after FDA approval in 61 centers. Therefore, we believe we have a quite good representation of clinical practice in the United States with this device today. I mean, it's always important to know what the clinical trials say, and it's equally important to know what happens in actual clinical practice. So what did you find? That is correct. The two-year survival uh, was the primary endpoint of this trial. IE patients had to survive without a, a disabling stroke and or device replacement. And in the initial trial, 58% of patients met this goal, which was a dramatic improvement historically over the HeartMate 1 device, which would accomplish this goal in approximately uh, 10 to 20% of patients, and or medical therapy, where less than 10% of patients would reach this goal. So to recap, 58% uh, two-year survival in the clinical trial, in the post-approval study in clinical practice, this result was actually somewhat better at 62%. So we were very pleased to see that the results from the clinical trial could be translated into clinical practice. Which is really good considering the fact that they're now th talking about possibly you know, going to a, a, an even safer group of patients, I guess would be a way of saying it, a, a less risky group of patients in terms of destination therapy, correct? That is correct, and actually I think this trial uh, I would say from a scientific uh, perspective, it's not a major breakthrough. It just validates uh, that we can do in clinical practice what can be done in the clinical trial setting. It is, however, a very important study because we also looked at uh, serious adverse events in this trial. Historically, assist device therapy was used to simply save lives and little attention was paid to uh, quality of life and serious adverse events. We now, as you mentioned, are thinking about implanting patients much earlier, not to save their life, uh, but to improve their quality of life. So we looked very closely at serious adverse events. And this is a major finding of our study, that serious adverse events are actually quite common in these patients. When you look at survival without serious adverse events, meaning in this case a major stroke, a device-related infection, and or the need to exchange the pump, this result at two years was 43%. Um, it clearly indicates that we have to uh, see major improvements uh, in the rate of serious adverse events. On the other hand, equally important, patients who would most certainly be dead after two years now have an almost 50% survival chance with an excellent quality of life. This is a very important finding from this study. 
Well, I think the term you used, you used here in the interview and also in the paper was, it's really dramatic. I think it's dramatic. I mean, specifically dramatic when you look at what has happened over the past 15 years. The paper has a nice figure that illustrates the uh, survival chance of a typical destination therapy patient uh, over two years. Only 10, 15 years ago on medical therapy, this chance of survival was essentially zero. We went through the uh, positive pump era that ended uh, actually with phasing out the HeartMate 1 device uh, about 6 to 12 months ago. And in this era, the two-year survival was about 25%. These pumps were clunky, big, and loud, so it wasn't the highest quality of life. We have now moved to a two-year survival of 58% um, in this clinical study, and in many centers, including ours, around 70%. So dramatic improvement in survival of an absolute 50% in the right patients. That is very dramatic. That is a dramatic result. Now we know that data can change from a clinical trial to real clinical life. So before you did this study, were there specific endpoints that you were concerned with or at least really interested in seeing how they did in real clinical life as opposed to the, the clinical trial world? Yeah, we have learned that you know there's a learning curve uh, for not only surgically implanting, but also managing these devices. And there was, I would say, reasonable concern, a definite uh, a procedural concern by FDA for any trial like this, whether devices can be rolled out into clinical practice. So we were particularly concerned whether stroke, uh, device infection, and the need for device exchange would be as good as we saw in the clinical trial. And as a matter of fact, these results have improved. Uh, the stroke rate specifically is now at about 10% uh, per patient year, which is quite good if you think about how deathly ill this population is uh, at the time of implantation. So yes, we looked for stroke, infection, and pump exchange, and all these results were favorable compared to the early clinical trial. This is very encouraging. Well, congratulations on this study. There is certainly a lot to learn. What's your take-home message? Final take-home message is that um, the uh, continuous flow pumps have dramatically changed uh, survival expectations uh, for patients with very advanced heart failure, from certain death to, I would say, approximately 50% chance of being alive at two years with an excellent quality of life, taking into account all the serious adverse events. Uh, this is a dramatically good. On the other hand, we have to further improve these devices. Bleeding, device thrombosis, stroke, the need for pump exchange infection remain serious concerns that are more important, when even more important, when you look at healthier patients. So we are, the field is now at a crossroads, crossroad where we need to test if these devices with the current adverse event profile are good enough for patients that are not as sick as the patients we tested it in. Uh, I would say in clinical practice uh, in the United States, uh, these devices are grossly underutilized. Uh, patients come uh, uh, to attention of specialized centers that can implant the device too late. So this is an important message uh, from our study that survival is quite good, has dramatically improved over the past decade, and that uh, cardiologists in practice should refer their patients earlier. Again, congratulations. The paper is in the May 6th issue of the Journal of the American College of Cardiology. And for Cardiosaurus World News, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.